We want to get to know our guest uh, this early morning. It's my first time to meet you, Shaiju, just about an hour ago. Yeah. And uh, I have been reading a, your story on, on the web and uh, from what um, your friend and, and, and ours, Tehran, uh, has uh, sent to us. Mm -hmm. Um, you were born in India, mm -hmm. and at a very early age, you began to develop an intense hunger for the Lord. How did this begin? Uh, uh, right, right from a very young age, maybe four or five, even after, uh, even the time I, I, I started going to school, uh, my mother made sure she to she would tell me she would say after you come f come back from school before you do anything else you need to see God you need to thank God for uh, letting you have a good day in your school and just spend time talking to God so that developed as a habit that every day I come back from school uh, I wouldn't go out to play I would instead uh, spend time uh, praying every day uh, that began the uh, desire, the desire to spend time with God increased. Um, I think it was around the age of seven, uh, if I'm not wrong, it, there was this, this meeting that was happening and, and a couple of ladies were there. Uh, there was a guest invited, uh, but he didn't turn up, uh, probably because there was only uh, a few of them there, so uh, they just made fun of me. They said, uh, would you uh, they, they said, little preacher, they said, the little preacher is here. Would the little preacher like to uh, preach today since we don't have the main guest coming? So, uh, well, they, I'm sure they didn't expect me to say yes, but I ended up saying, yes, I'll preach. So I remember running up to mom and, and saying, mom, uh, uh, what do I preach? I, I still remember what she said. She said, never ask a human being what to preach. Uh, she, I said, okay, so I'm going to preach. She said, no, no. Uh, not until you spend time praying. Mm. So I remember they were already there, they were, the ladies were chit-chatting, and my mom sent me to the bedroom, and, and she said, go, spend time praying first before you, you, you go and preach. Uh, that was my first advice on ministry, mm. that you don't say uh, whatever you want to say, but you spend time seeking the Lord before you do anything else. Mm. Uh, so I went to the bedroom, I, I remember pr kneeling down, we had a small bedroom then, um, knelt down before that small bed and I, I sp prayed for some time and I remember writing down stuff and I, I brought it to the, uh, to the hall where the ladies were sitting at. I had it and opened my Bible, kept the paper in between the Bible uh, planning to read the message out, but I, I, I still remember that. I, I threw the paper just before I began to, uh, to preach. Uh, I, I don't remember exactly what was my first message, but I did speak for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, thankfully, wow. it started ever since. Tell us about, about your mom and why she had such an influence. And yeah. what was behind that? Yeah, the, the, I've, I've noticed some people say, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's not right for her to to get you into praying all the time and pr uh, preaching. But I want I want you to understand. I was never forced into it, uh, not once. Because the only thing my my mother taught me was to seek God, and out of that time of seeking God, uh, developed I developed an intense hunger for God. The, all what she did was she showed me the direction. Uh, and it picked on. It, to, for you to understand why she would do that um, is you need to understand why, what happened to her. What, uh, she, that she got married and, and the day she, she came back home, she realized that my father was mentally ill. Mm -hmm. uh, she was in a great shock. Uh, she was a young woman who had come down to Bangalore for a job. She was a nurse uh, and she was pursuing a career. She, she was in a, in, a, in a great shock that the, the day after a marriage, she would know that her husband uh, was m mentally depressed. Uh, uh, in fact, there was a lot of witchcraft, uh, which is very prevalent in India. Uh, I don't know about okay. how it is in Canada, but it's, uh, and, 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 my, and my dad uh, was mentally oppressed by the, by the enemy. Um, it, was a, it was a terrible shock to her. And she was tired of 
tired of that life. Every day, uh, suddenly my dad would lose his coal. Uh, there would be no peace at home. Finally, she decided to end her life. But then she realized that she was pregnant with me. Mm. Uh, she keeps telling me this. She says, uh, the only reason why I, I live today was that I said, I have a child that I bear. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm going to live for this child. I'm just going to live for the child's sake. Uh, and and she, she kept holding on. She kept holding on. And, and one day she, she was in the room and she told me this. She said, I felt like a strong hand uh, take her hand and put it on her stomach. And she was carrying me then. Uh, and that hand said, pray. And she was, she was, she was, even though she was very religious, she didn't know what it was to pray. She knew, she was Orthodox uh, Jacobite then. Uh, so she knew to go to the church and light a candle. Uh, that was her, her belief on, on prayer. So, but she didn't know what it was to like pray, pray, you know. Uh, so she told me, she said, she felt somebody uh, helping her say these words that Lord, Lord, please give me a son, because if it's going to be a daughter, she's going to suffer like me. So if you give me a son, he'll grow up and go on his own. So please give me a son. And, and to add flavor, I don't know, I'm sure she meant it. She said, uh, if you give me a son, I'll make him a, a priest, because that's all she knew. Yeah. So, uh, and she said, I'll make him a priest. But God knew, and she also said, make him a writer, make him a singer. And all what she, she liked, she coded everything. Uh, mm. uh, some of it are, are coming true mm. uh, with, two, I've already finished writing two books. I, I believe it's the prayer of my mom. Mm. Uh, it was that prayer that gave birth. I believe it was from that brokenness uh, that she sought the Lord. Uh, it, the enemy tried to break her, to mm. break her apart. But by the sovereign will of God, it only draw her mm. closer to God. Mm. And the result of it, here I am. Um, what would you say to, to the person who would suggest that uh, children are too young to comprehend and commune with God, especially with parents who may be watching and they've got younger children and they think, you know, just turn on the television, let the television babysit them. And what, what can they do, second part of the question, what can they do to have spiritual influence and impact upon children? Uh, to answer your first question, um, I, I, I really, uh, I, I, I don't know if, I, if words can um, uh, tell enough of how much uh, of influence uh, of God has been to my life from my very young age. Uh, I was, while we were coming, in fact, we had an hour's journey before we uh, came to the studio sharing with some of my friends that it was so much easier for me to believe God when I was a little kid than it is now. I'm just being honest. Uh, because we, we, we stayed in a small, small rented house a uh, few years ago. And I remember I had this favorite um, uh, uh, night bulb, you know. Uh, I hated dark when I was a kid. Uh, so I, I enjoyed this this light bulb. So every night I had this this, this little uh, bulb that would be left on for me every night. So one morning I woke up and my dad said, "Well, the bulb is fused." And so I I, I was almost in tears because I was scared of of the dark. Um, still getting over the the fear of dark uh, as a child. So I told my dad, I said, "Dad, can can you please buy one?" Well, those days we didn't have have the money to afford it. So my dad said, no, I don't think we have the money. So why don't you just pray for it? Thank God for uh, parents who would uh, help me believe God for even the little things. And as a child, I had nothing. I think, uh, mm. Brother Paul, it's, it's the childlike faith mm -hmm. uh, that helped me believe for that because mm. Uh, thinking of now, if somebody asked me to pray for a fused bulb, I was like, are you kidding? Are you serious? You want me to pray for this? I may ask them a couple of questions, but mm. I, I remember what happened then. I had absolutely mm -hmm. no doubt, uh, no doubt whatsoever. I remember, uh, I didn't even question my dad. I went up to the bulb. I said, in the name of Jesus, let this work. And and I, I, was, I, was, I was reminded today how I switched on the, the switch 
without no doubt, I was so sure that when I switched on, the bulb would work. It was simple faith in God. Uh, and they, because I knew that the God that I served listened to my prayers. So as a child, I believed that God would hear, to my, hear my prayers. And did uh, the bulb work? The bulb worked. <laughs> and <laughs> till today, my dad quotes that and he remembers that. You know what that tells me, Shaiju, is that the Lord, the living God, is concerned about the little things in our life that we think people aren't concerned about. Right. And we think God isn't concerned about, but He is. He's concerned about the details, the There's small details of our life. I notice is in my meetings, the ones that are most touched are little children. Mm -hmm. Because they are so mm -hmm. pure and mm -hmm. innocent that mm -hmm. they grab it first, even before the adults grab it.